So Thomas Prince, how are you going? Oh, I'm good, Danielle. How are you? Yeah, going really well, thank you. So thanks for joining me today, Thomas. Um, you graduated from senior in 2007, so a little while ago now. Can you think back to 2006, 2007 and tell me what kind of student you were? What, you went, what were you into at the time? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I, I really, really enjoyed the transition from year 10 to Benigo Senior. Uh, one, there was just so many new and more faces to me. Uh, you know, to go from a smaller size to a, such a big school um, was really exciting for me. Um, so, but I, I guess it was the change of my education, I guess. You know, going through primary school, high school, I was always just the smart kid, I guess. Um, and never did homework because I never needed to. Um, where Bendigo Senior was the first big step up. Uh, so transitioning to managing my own time during free periods and actually having the responsibility and needing to go home and put in the work, um, that was a big adjustment. Uh, and something I didn't really adjust to, really. Uh, I, I think I recognised that and, and chose not to. Um, uh, and was happy to go, oh, listen, this, you know, I want to focus on enjoying this time. You're still doing as well as I can. Um, but you know, when I'm looking at the kids around me who are stressing out, um, I just didn't really buy into that. Um, so so it, was, it was pretty different, Benigo Senior. Um, but I absolutely loved it. Yeah. And um, yeah, you're right. It's such a such an interesting step from high school at your seven to 10 school to Benio senior. And it's, it's just like this um, big new world and the independence and freedom. It's um, yeah, a bit to adjust to at the start. So Tom, a bit of a two parter for you. When you were back at senior, did you know what you wanted to do in the future? And also, did you ever imagine that you would one day get into local politics as you are now? <laughs> That's a good, good question. Oh, I, my understanding as a kid, you know, we're, our family always encouraged that higher education. Uh, so there was always never a second thought about going to university. You know, it was around the time that gap years were becoming a, a thing. Um, but in my mind, it was, you know, why? You're going straight on because you've got to be successful. Uh, so Mine was a logical approach. Engineering, um, especially regionally, uh, was um, was lacking and there wasn't um, much engineers up here. So there seemed to be a great opportunity for a job um, after university. Uh, and coupling with the idea that I've always been good at maths, good at science and things like that. Um, and I did enjoy those things, but it was more of a logical choice that um, engineering was a safe and, and good decision, I guess. So, um, so I pursued that uh, and got into engineering locally here. Um, so that was cool. But yeah, if, if you said to me then, listen, um, your whole perspective on, on education and that whole process and pursuance of, I guess, a job versus something you're passionate about. Uh, yeah, if you threw that at me, I probably wouldn't have bought into it. Um, but here I am 10 years later uh, running for local council. I mean, looking back, like it's, it is a logical thing. I've always been involved in the community. Um, you know, even when I was at Benigo Senior, you know, involved in the different sports clubs, the youth groups, um, different things, helping people. Um, but back then it wasn't a realistic um, or even their logical um, career goal, I guess. Um, so yeah, back then I wouldn't have taken a second thought. <laughs> oh, it's, in it's interesting the way things work out for sure. Um, and you mentioned a, then a few sort of community groups. Um, obviously you're someone who's very, very passionate about Bendigo. What are some of the groups you've been involved with? What are some of the things that you've been up to since you graduated? Yeah, so I'm since I've graduated, um, you know, I went off to university. I was there for three, three and a half years um, and decided that, um, yeah, I guess 
I wasn't passionate about what I was doing. Um, and so it was probably good to take a break and just find what I cared about. Uh, and at that time, there was a gridiron club starting in Bendigo. And you know, it's a pretty cool opportunity to be involved with a, a sporting club from the very beginning uh, and to, to put time and effort into growing that and supporting that. Um, so I, I made a conscious decision to strip back a lot of my commitments, you know, work part time to put time into the club itself. Uh, but you know, there was a soccer club uh, and I dabbled in um, just having a taste of different sports, but it, it flourished in a lots of different avenues. So with the gridiron club itself, I saw a great opportunity to work in schools. Uh, you know, the sport itself promotes diversity in participation, whether you're a big heavy burdened um, kid or the, tall, uh, the small little scrawny one. Um, you know, all of those um, physical attributes are really handy in this sport. So I see it as a great opportunity to get in the schools and talk about um, how everyone can be different, but everyone is really important in their own way. So we launched, I've yeah, been doing the schools program for, I don't know, six, seven years. Um, uh, but you know, we've also done some time in the kids wards at the hospital, uh, giving back, volunteering, and just trying to support those who need more help. So the Gridiron Club, I kind of discovered that it was the opening door for all these opportunities. Um, so it was the first one, but it, yeah, it allowed me to do a lot more. But beyond that, uh, I uh, volunteered as a CNI dog trainer. Uh, so I did that for two dogs. That was maybe for three years. Uh, I've never had a dog in my life. Uh, so I thought it'd be a great opportunity to grow myself um, <laughs> while giving back to someone. Um, so, and, and also just educate um, the community about um, disability uh, and, and how we can support those um, in different ways. So there's that, oh, what else? I've, my last campaign saw me trying to assist with a couple of um, different community groups where there was a group of guys trying to uh, turn a, an abandoned building into a skate park um, and just community groups, you know, working with uh, different reserve committees. Uh, I, I'm currently the club development officer with Gridiron Victoria and, and that was kind of birthed out of the idea of trying to strengthen and, and support um, our clubs so that they're far healthier. So I've, I've done um, little, little catch-ups with all sorts of different sporting groups in Bendigo, just talking about constitution, strategic planning, how to move forward, um, inspiring volunteering. So um, yeah, there's lots of little cameos um, around the place. Um, and yeah, so lots of things, um, just to name a few, I guess. Have you always been someone, I guess, who has, um, I suppose, identified situations and tried to do something about it? I mean, we can all see different situations that happen and it's really easy to just, I guess, coast back and complain about it. But have you always been someone who has been really proactive and going, hang on, this is happening. What can we do to change it? Is that something you've always sort of had? Yeah, I, I never really thought I did. Uh, I never considered myself too much of a leader. Um, but in reflection, I guess, uh, in, yeah, in hindsight, I kind of have been. Uh, you know, at, when I was at school, my, the thing, biggest thing I prided myself on was that I tend to know who everyone was, um, no matter their backgrounds or their social circles. You know, my, friend, my close friendship group you know, always knew me as the guy that knew that weird person, that odd person. And, and then I kind of... Um, work through these groups, but I always just identified people who needed friends, um, people who had value. Uh, so, you know, even back then, I didn't think so, but, you know, be, I now look at the friends that I have and I realise that, you know, the reaching out and helping people started pretty early on a, on a really basic level, but I, I guess that's where it's got to start. And, and as I've grown up, you know, I've been passionate about Bendigo. I talk to as many people as I can and I've just got a, I feel I've got a really good understanding and more so a lot of the knowledge. And then I, you know, when I talk to someone who's been in Bendigo for 40 years and they just 
aren't aware of something and I've got that information to share with them. So it's not always about uh, reaching out and building people up and trying to uh, fix things. And, but it's, sometimes it's just about creating that connection and giving them the information so they can do it. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a great power in that. I think that's the sustainable um, solution to a lot of our problems that if we can provide our community with the answers um, or the solutions and put it in their hands to, um, to get the result, then it's, well, it's going to be a lot cheaper for us, but um, manpower wise, it's, it's going to be a lot, a lot more effective. So, and Tom, I guess, as we all know, this year has been crazy. Um, it's the year that none of us, um, none of us expected. I just want to know, how do you stay, I guess, positive and motivated for the future? And especially in this kind of year that we're having, how do you just stay a positive person in the community, I guess? You got to. <laughs> um, like, for me, like around when I was 22, 23, when I was finishing up uni and, you know, I had a complete perspective change. Um, you know, the, the pursuit of what's successful, you know, not being driven by the idea of money, but in the idea of happiness um, and helping others to find that happiness. Um, that was the big thing for me. Uh, so, uh, you know, since then I've worked part-time, you know, it doesn't mean that I live comfortably and have all these lavish things but it does mean that all of a sudden that we're in such a lifestyle where everyone's financially impacted and things like that you know i can sustain on on a little bit of money um because i'm not focusing on that so um it's meant that life's been pretty easy to make that adjustment you know my my current work hasn't been too affected so i have been pretty lucky with that but yeah, I, I'm just not focused on a lot of things that have been impacted. You know, my, my main focus right now is my mental health and my physical health, uh, making sure that's all good. Because if those two fundamentals can stay really well, then we can overcome our stress around our financial situation, around other things and other factors. So uh, I guess my big thing for the community is that if we can... Um, build the foundation around those two aspects and then we can get through this. Um, so, and as I think we've seen through the second wave, you know, that's when the mental side of things is starting to be tested and, and therefore have a flow on. I guess in a, a similar sort of um, on the topic of, yeah, I guess what sort of happened this year. Um, I like to ask the guests that I chat to um, a bit of advice that they would give to current students. So if you could chat to our year 11 and 12 students, they're currently in the middle of remote learning 2.0. If you could give them some advice and just something to, I guess, yeah, give them a bit of hope, what kind of advice would you give them? Of course, study hard, uh, work hard and do the best you can. But just remember that at the end of this year, the world doesn't end. Uh, you don't have to have all the answers tomorrow. You don't have to know exactly what you're going to do when you grow up tomorrow. Um, focus on your health, your happiness, and find what you're really passionate about. And it may take you four years, 10 years, 20 years, um, but that pursuit is something that's really good. Uh, yeah, and I think a lot of us, uh, you know, if, you know, talking to the 40s and 50 year olds, you know, their perspective seems to be that you don't want to get stuck in a, in a job that you don't enjoy for the rest of your life and find out you've lived without living. So if at the end of the year, things don't turn out the way you want them to, that's okay because there are great things around the corner. Awesome. That's great advice, Tom. Thank you so much um, for talking to me. Really looking forward to sharing your story. And yes, good luck with everything you do in the future. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, yeah. Thanks for your time.